Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. We're going to continue talking about UV tools. We've been going over them a lot uh, in the last uh, couple months, uh, but they're incredibly handy and useful when dealing with UVs, which is a very common thing to work with when you're modeling and texturing objects. The UV editor can be found under Windows UV Editor. Let's open that up real quick here. The tool we're going to be talking about today is under the tool menu we have the grab UV tool. You can also find it in the toolbar, this kind of uh, X arrow icon right here, this third one in this section is the grab UV tool. So first, in order to use the grab UV tool or any UV tool really, I need to have UVs in my scene. So like I've been doing, I'm going to open the sculpting mesh visor, choose an object. We're going to look at this tree stump right click and import the Maya file, close the visor and now I have this tree stump model that is provided by Maya. So with the model in my scene and selected if I open the UV editor now I can see the tree stumps UVs in my scene and I'm going to click this button here to hide that peach colored texture and just look at the UVs themselves. So the grab UV tool as it kind of implies by the name it, it's a way of selecting and moving UVs. So I go to the tool in the tool menu here grab UV tool and I'll open the options and I'll move this over to the side so these are the U grab UV tool settings here and I'll hit reset tool just so they're using their default settings and you can see in the UV editor here I have this circular brush around my cursor so if I just left click and drag, you can see how I've selected or grabbed the UVs that are in that circle and now I'm pulling them around in the UV editor window. So this can be very useful for moving groups of UVs around uh, subtly or even dramatically if you really want to. So that's kind of the gist of it. However, there's obviously all these settings in here that we can look at to fine-tune our use of the tool. First setting here is size and the default value is 0.1. If I increase or decrease this size value you can see my brush now is much smaller. Like so. If I increase it it gets much bigger. Undo all that and reset back to the normal default uh, size. Next is strength, which is at default 80. The strength is how much it pulls. So the, right now the strength is at 80. If I decrease down really low, like 18, click and drag, you can see that the pull or the yank on the UVs as I move my mouse is much is proportionately smaller in strength. Undo that and increase this up to 100. It's much stronger. And you can see with 100 strength, the UVs kind of stick to my brush completely. If I reset this back to the value of 80 and click and drag, you can see that the UVs eventually get left behind as my brush stroke continues to move. So it's like 80% of a pull and it has that 20% that is not sticking with the brush completely as I move the brush around. That with a strength of 100 it stays with the brush completely. So I'll reset that back down. I might even move it down just so it's a bit not quite so dramatically crazy when I pull and push these UVs around. Next we have twist. It's a checkbox. If we check the twist uh, option and click and drag, you can see that instead of pulling and pushing the UVs around, it instead twists them or rotates them in place, which is a, can be a handy feature if you just need to shift some UVs slightly around if they're not quite aligned the way you want. In addition to the twist command is also a direction. I'm going to turn twist off. So right now when I left click and drag you can see I can pull and push these UVs in all directions which would be the U and the V direction. If I change this to only U, left click and drag, even though my mouse is going up and down the UV movement is constrained to left and right or the U direction. If I change it to V, left click and drag, again it's constrained to the V direction or up and down in the UV editor. 
interestingly with the twist command checked and then if you change the direction to be constrained along U or V it will do like a pinch if I left click and drag now you can see that it will pinch inward with the U direction if I do the V direction it will go the other way in a pinching in a horizontal way so that's an interesting combination there with twist active and choosing a direction so those are the main brush options in the Grab UV tool. We do have two other sections in our tool settings. Let's first look at display. So there's a checkbox for show brush ring during stroke. So right now you can see the brush ring and right now it's kind of flickering in and out. If I check this back on, left click and drag, you can see the brush as I move the mouse. If I uncheck this, left click and drag, you do not see the brush as I move my mouse and that can be handy if you're if that brush ring is getting in the way of see, being able to see what you're doing that's all that's under display and then we have fall off now fall off has lots of things here and this uh, setup here is using a profile for the brush and all this is kind of a generic version of the of brush controls that you'll find in lots of different brushes in Maya for example if you were to do any other kind of painting uh, function within Maya, you'll have this kind of fall off section in there. For example, if we go to modify transformation tools and let's look at soft modification tool, for example, and in the options here, you can see we have a fall off curve. Let's close that. For example, you can double click on the move tool and here they have soft selection and if you turn on soft selection you do have this fall off curve with the curve presets and so on it's the same sort of controls here in other functions in Maya so this would be a relatively common set of controls let's get back to the tool grab UV tool options so we have our fall off controls and what essentially this doing is giving you a profile shape for your brush by default we have this kind of curving fall off so this essentially what's happening is if you imagine that this this left side of the box is the center of the brush the profile of the fall off of the brush moves to the edge of the brush the outside ring of the brush in this kind of manner if we change the shape of this curve by clicking and dragging within here you can change how the fall off is interpolated by Maya so if we undo all this so by default it's something like this right we have a straight line through here and the way this is created is you have these little boxes and if I click and drag on this box I'm moving them around so if I were to for example make this the opposite where we have this and then I left click and drag you can see what's happening is the outer ring is moving and it's falling off in toward the center of the brush as opposed to the opposite which is what we were doing we were having the inner the middle of the brush pulling and it falls off to the outer edge and what I've done here is I flipped it so now the outer edge of the brush is pulling harder and it's falling off toward the center of the brush giving us this kind of effect so I'm changing this the profile shape of that fall off on the brush hopefully that kind of is you can visualize that so you can manipulate these points to change the shape of that fall off let me put this back so that the center of the brush is the strongest pull but I could do for example something like this So now it's pulling hard in the center of the brush and on the outer ring, but it falls off in the in kind of the middle a ring around the center. <laughs> so you can kind of see that here. So the middle of the brush pulls hard, the outer ring of the brush pulls hard, and then it, the fall off is happening in a ring around the center of the brush. <laughs> so I'm not sure when that kind of uh, profile would be useful, but that's what you can do by manipulating this fall off shape so you can see here we have our types we have surface slash volume then we have surface or just volume and you can just kind of click and drag and see how 
affecting these different ones changes the result that you get. Then you click here, yeah, you can reset your curve back to the default. And or if you or if you like the shape that you have, you can say save custom curve, click and it will save that down here in your custom curve area and you have lots of little empty boxes to save them. And then they give you some presets of curves that they've already created that you can use based on your needs. So we have this kind of brush profile or this kind of brush profile or this one which kind of fills the whole thing so it's just a straight up hard pull on the entire brush with no fall off, with no fall off at all. If we click this button we get a zoomed in view of our fall off curve creation box. So if this smaller box is difficult to uh, see, if you click this little button here it gives you a much larger version of it. Now we do have a checkbox here for snap to grid which is the same one that's right here. Oh, if, che if it's checked on it lets you snap to the grid that's within this box. You see these little dotted hash marks making a grid within this box. And if you've started making all these points and you decide that's an interesting one. If you decide, you know, I don't want any of these, they have these little X's down here, these little X boxes to delete those particular points. You do have these default points that you cannot delete, but if you click an empty space, you can add a new point like this. But you have to have a minimum of these four points with these two on the edges, whoops, and then these two within the center to create your profile. And then you have a reset curve button here again to go back to your default view or your default curve shape. Then you can close that and get back to here. So there's a lot of stuff involved in creating your own custom brush profile. That's all that really is doing. It just gives you lots of control over it. So it's, it's, it can seem kind of complicated when you first look at it. There's lots of things in here. But really all it is is a list of preset curves that you can choose from or you can make your own custom one within this box and save your own custom curves and you can reset it or save it snap the grid or zoom in and look at it but that's essentially all there is to the fall off section of the grab UV tool anyway that's the grab UV tool hope you enjoyed the video and uh, like and subscribe and comment I definitely uh, enjoy getting feedback from you guys I'm glad you're enjoying the UV uh, tool series I think we're getting toward the end. We're going to move on to something else probably after a couple more videos. But thanks again for supporting the Maya Tool Belt, and I'll talk to you later.